So I fell asleep on the couch for the first time in a while. I don't know, probably about 2 o'clock or something. Woke up at 5. Typically, I usually wake up after a few hours on the couch. It's not like super com it's comfortable, but it's not like super comfortable. And I couldn't fall back asleep for the next like 3 4 hours. So, yeah, that's fun. That's always fun. Um, Anyway, last night was the first time I made actually pretty decent money in a while. I'm happy about that. Even though my last order, I was just something told me like, don't take this order. <laughs> it was I don't go I don't take orders downtown. Uh, but the last order I took <clears throat> took me a little farther um, south than I wanted to go, so. Wasn't quite downtown, but I was like, it's probably like halfway between downtown and where I usually like to stop. So it's only a, it's only a few miles difference. Um, I was like, well, this is this is a double for like twelve fifty for three and a half miles, and it's just going right around the corner here. So it's like five minutes to get back this way. Not a big deal. I'll take it. Um, I'm doing pretty good. So I take it, and on my way back, I get a new breach goes off for Burger King. Now this is like just about 10 o'clock. It's like almost exactly 10 o'clock. goes off for Burger King <coughs> for a total of like three and a half miles, which was coming right back where I was. So I had to go downtown and come back this way, so it was coming right back here. I was like, ah. Oh. I don't want to go downtown, not because I'm scared or anything, but because the restaurants usually suck downtown and traffic. But I get there and there's like no, there's nobody in line in the drive through I didn't think they were open actually. I pulled up and there was nobody there, um, but they were. But I'm sitting there and just telling myself, I'm like, there's something, there's something's gonna be happening this order. Something's wrong. They're gonna be closed or something. Um, there's no way in hell. Getting a Burger King order for one value meal for sixteen dollars, going three miles in the area that I'm in. I'm like, but I've, I've had oddball ones like that before, so I'm like, whatever. Uh, I've done pretty well tonight. Let's let's give it a shot. So I get there, and of course, again, there's nobody there at all. Nobody. Um, the dining room's closed. Obviously, it's after ten. And nobody in the drive through There's not even one person at the window because I can see the window when I pulled in. And she's like, I'll be with you in a moment. I'm like, I'm like, what what are you doing when there's no customers that are gonna be with me in a moment when I'm the only person here? But whatever. So and it didn't take too long. Usually when I hear that at some places, it's like five minutes and I'm staring directly in front of them. There's nothing going on. But she comes back like a minute, minute, minute and a half later, and she's like, what can I get you? Um, very polite, but, and I was like, yeah, I got, um, I got Uber Eats for Craig. And she's like, yeah, um, we don't have the Chicken Kings, or Chicken, Chicken, whatever they fucking call them. You know, um, the Chicken Meal, and, um, we're out of those, and, um, we told we told two other people already came through for that order, and we told them the same thing. We don't we don't have the chickens. I said that explains the price, which it did because if two other drivers already unassigned it, um, it's probably been at least a good half hour for this guy, um, half hour uh, since this guy ordered. And I'm like, and it's only going through. Them. I said that explains it. So. Two other drivers decided to not do their jobs um, and just unassign the order to let the next driver take care of it. Um, which I understand the reasoning why they do this shit. It's because it's not really worth their time after pulling up to a drive-through 
maybe there's a few cars there and you're waiting in the speaker. Come to find out that it's they can't make the food. Um, now, here's what pisses me off, is that these restaurants should be the people handling this. They can easily cancel the order on their side. They have the uh, offer. They have the ability to cancel the order on their side. They just refuse to do it. They have, they have the ability to call the customers if there's an issue that they can't make the order. They could have called him. They could have called him and said, you know, but they're like, oh, we don't know how to do that. Well, you don't know how to do it because nobody's shown you how to do it. Or because your manager just tells you not to do it so you don't know how to do it. Um, and fast food places usually aren't that big of a deal. If you can go inside, you can walk in right away and say, hey, we're out of the chicken. Would they like something else? You know, I can substitute it with a, with a Whopper or something. Um, some places will just cancel it. You know, um, and the restaurant is supposed to cancel the order if there's an issue. Um, Uber Eats will pay you $3 unless you've driven very, very far. Sometimes that happens. Um, but for an average order, they're going to pay you three dollars for a canceled order. Um, so after you've been sitting there not getting paid, is three dollars really worth your time, or are you just going to unassign and hopefully get another order real quick? Um, but the right thing to do, if the restaurant won't do their job to make sure the order is canceled or have, has an adequate replacement available. Um, or offer to at least call the customer and say, hey, we're out of the Chick King. Would you like to have um, a regular chicken sandwich? Um, or would you like a Whopper instead? Is there something else you'd like to set that's comp? Because that's going to be like the most expensive thing on their meal other than probably a triple Whopper. Um, so pretty much any substitution, they should be fine with. Uh, So I, I called them, um, got it canceled, got my $3, which pissed me off. I went home because I was mad at that one. Um, because in the time frame that it would have taken me to deliver that order and get the $16, I got $3. And still had to drive back in the same direction that I took towards my house. So. Um, but that's what happens with these jobs. There are things that you have to do that you don't like and you're not going to get paid or paid well for it. So, uh, to take care of the customers. The reason why customers hate us is because of asshole drivers like that. That's part of it. There's, it's pretty much all asshole drivers, but that's one of the things that these asshole entitled drivers do is that they refuse to take care of the situation as needed to ensure they could probably, because if that would have been handled as soon as that driver got there the first time, said, hey, they're out of the Chick King. Uh, I apologize. Um, there, there's no real substitution available for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get your order canceled so you can go ahead and order something else. Instead of making the guy wait a half hour, 45 minutes to find out that he's not going to get his food that he's been waiting for. And that customer probably would have been like, oh, okay, cool, and then real quickly ordered something from, you know, a chicken sandwich from Wendy's or Donald's or Popeyes, which is up the street. Um, our Popeyes suck. Um, not quality-wise, it's service and speed. So, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's all of the Popeyes. I know it's the two that's close to me, but they're just horrid. horrid. And I think KFC's open 11 to, to 11 o'clock, too. You can get a chicken sandwich from them. So, he could have, he had options that he probably could have taken care of if the first driver, or even the second driver, would have done their fucking job. And then I wouldn't have wasted my time with that and could have taken something different. Um, and not ended my night so early, even though that was later than I'm normally out anyway. But, because I was doing so well, I would have stayed out a little bit longer. I would have kept making money. Um, however, I did pull up to a house on that order beforehand, so it kind of worked out. And, um, Uh, a lady noticed my DoorDash sign in my window, uh, my LED light, that I can sw that switch back and forth between the services that I use. Um, she said, that's cool. I'm like, did they give you that? I said, no, I bought it on Amazon. 
And the daughter, who came to the door at first with alcohol order, and the mom ordered it. Um, the daughter, who's in her 20s, because she said, you need, can, you, can you use my ID? you got to use the account holders. I said, i got to verify it against whatever the account holder is. Which is the text I sent them before I left the store. But, but, uh, so her mom's going to dig through her purse and find it. Uh, but the daughter, um, who's, like I said, she's probably mid-20s, late 20s, something like that. Um, she mentions that. She goes, yeah, they can, you can buy list signs on, on, online. He goes, well, that's kind of scary. I said, I got one of those moments too, because like, I do that too. Do you use full time? And I said, yeah, but I'm starting. To, I'm starting at the point where I, I'm looking for something normal, because it's not really been as profitable as it used to be. Um, and they're like, do you like? Can you can you clean carpets? I said, I've never cleaned carpets professionally, but I'm sure I can do it. Um, and the girl's like, so my uncle runs runs a runs a carpet cleaning place, and he needs help bad. I'm like, it's like pretty much a guaranteed hire. He needs the help for summertime. He's, he's he needs somebody bad. Um, and she's like, he tells me her name, and she's like, I work at the office. I was like, maybe I'll. Go. <laughs> she was gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go clean carpets because. Because the uh, niece of the guy who owns it is gorgeous. And she works there too. <laughs> uh, us men always thinking of the woman. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> she could have a boyfriend, a fiance, she could marry him. Okay, I don't fucking know. But that's not why. I mean, if I got something that's going to pay well, I really don't fucking care what I'm doing. Honestly, I don't. As long as it pays well. Um, I've, I've done so many different things in jack of all trades, master of none. So, but hey, maybe, maybe it'll work out, you know, even if it's just part time or something that's um, just for the summertime, because summertime just sucks for, for DoorDash anyway. I can't do rides until I get all I get my vehicle fixed up enough that um, he breaks down, he my check engine like taken care of. Uh, before I can start taking rides again to make up for what I'm not making in road action. So and I just can't I just can't justify driving using three gallons of gas to and from at, at minimum, to and from Solent. Solon is Solon Bedford is the closest area I can I can deliver for Amazon. Uh, it's going to cost me three gallons of gas round trip, not including the gas that I'm going to use while driving uh, to deliver these things. And everything I see on the schedule is like being already less than twenty bucks an hour. And again, that's on that's what I'm making before. I don't know. I still got to give it a shot and see how see how it works out, but um, but it's really hard to justify spending um, fifteen dollars, roughly twelve or fifteen dollars in gas, just to hopefully maybe make forty to fifty dollars on the shift. Because it looks like I, it's like every time I log on there, there's only like a couple, a couple two-hour, three-hour blocks available that are all less than twenty bucks an hour. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, well, twenty bucks an hour, just like asking a lot to do what you do, twenty bucks an hour, minus gas, ends up being a lot less. Also, depends what you drive too. So, considering I drive a Ford Flex. It's on average 15 miles a gallon, 16 miles a gallon. Uh, got 17 last night because I was moving a lot more. Uh, didn't have the AC on because it, it was cool enough to not have the AC on. Speaking of that, it's the fall. Uh, so.
part of the thing is like I, I just gotta get out more in the morning. I gotta get up earlier and keep down done, done with this stuff. So today's Friday, and on Saturday and Sunday usually doesn't start too later anyway. So it's not that big of a deal tomorrow and Sunday, but um, I can still go out Monday before my son comes over. He comes over in the evening, so I can very easily work lunch through midday. Even if I'm doing shopping for Instacart or something. Um, so, part of it's me. Part of it's me not getting out in time. Um, but I have noticed a decrease in what I've made at night because I used to make about 30 bucks, around 30 bucks an hour in the evenings for dinner for between 6 and 10. Now I'm making around 20 to 22. Six and ten, which is what it used to make during the day. Now it's like I'm probably making somewhere between ten and fifteen every day. So if I'm doing that and spending my gas and wear and tear my vehicle, I might as well go work for fifteen bucks an hour doing carpet where I'm not using my. Vehicle. Plus, this is a good skill to have, especially when you have animals. You can learn how to clean shit like that. So, anyway, that's enough talking. People are actually listening to me talk. So, anyway, today is. What is today? Today is. It's Friday. It is week 13, day 5. Uh, it's recovery week. Uh, today is, we are repeating Tuesday's workout. Like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <coughs> so we are doing the turbo sculpt today. It's a, it's a sculpting uh, with training um, uh, video. Doing turbo sculpt by Turbo Jam, just using eight pound weights. It's nothing special, um, but that's what a recovery week is. It's, it's still working, but it's not working as hard. Uh, you still want to put in some effort to keep yourself going, keep yourself moving, keep yourself working, but it gives you a nice little break for a week from what you were doing, especially when you're going to go back in and go a little bit harder than the last time. So, um, it's just like anything else. When you take a rest break during the middle of your workout, you take a rest break from work, you take a vacation, you still do stuff on your vacation. So, um, that's what a recovery week is for. It's to give you a break from the norm, um, give your muscles a chance to relax, but not like let them get sedentary. Sedentary? Yeah, sedentary. I said sedimentary the other day, which is a layer of rock. Um, so, like I said, the whole purpose of a recovery week is to still work, but not work in the same way or as hard um, as before. So it's kind of that old saying, you need a vacation for your vacation, could you guys? It's because it, you know, it's completely... You didn't really do as much as you did, but you still worked, you know, because you were doing other shit. You walked around a lot, you went sightseeing, went boating, did whatever else you did on vacation. You stayed home and you did yard work and extra stuff around the house. You're still working, but you're not doing what you normally do, so it's a little bit different. Your body reacts a little bit different. So, um, the last recovery week, um, I ended up dropping a three quarters of an inch off my stomach, which was kind of cool, uh, as opposed to the normal quarter inch to a half inch I dropped each week doing the regular stuff. So um, I don't want to say it's a shock to the system, but it's kind of a jolt um, doing a little extra cardio, basically. Um, even though cardio only burns fat while you are working um, and muscle training, weight training uh, burns fat all day long while your muscles are recovering. 
so. Uh, so yeah, so yes, today t again today is the Turbo Sculpt video from Turbo Jam. It's about 45 minutes, and I'm going to quit bullshitting around and get it done so I can get out and make some money because I need money. Oh, the other thing, <laughs> I will always find something to talk about. So last week I had a fever, um, which has gone away, but I don't think everything has gone away. Um, this coughing is not because of anything like that. I don't have like I don't believe I have like COVID or a cold or a flu or anything like that, um, or strep throat or anything like that. I don't know, but um, I want to believe details and what I think it is, but I know what it's not. And since I haven't been making a lot of money, I thought I thought there was like only one. I was going to try to see about hitting up a free. I don't have insurance either. I'm going to try to hit one of the, the free clinic, and I thought there was only one in the area. And every time I try to call it, um, it seems very, very, very geared towards um, um, the Asian community of the area. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's supposedly uh, inter international everything. Um, Every time I try to call, you know, um, I've called other departments, and they're very hard to understand. Um, and they're here in Akron, um, and there's all these different languages you can choose from to speak or read their website. Um, but it's, it's, it starts with Asia International or something, the community, Asia International Community. I can't get a hold of anybody. Every time I call, I get somebody's direct the number on the website, the number the guy transferred me to, it goes right to somebody's voicemail. You know, and I never get a hold of them. And I haven't got a call back. So I don't know the process. I have no clue what the process is to try to get in here. Then I like this morning when I couldn't sleep, uh, after waking up on the couch, I'm like, there's gotta be another one around. There can't be just one of these in Akron. Then of course there's one that's even closer. Got my town circle. Um, that apparently is evenings as opposed to daytime, which the other one's daytime, which works better for me because I'm actually up and about. I can probably stop in and whatever, and whatever day it is. I still want to get checked to make sure everything's fine, um, even though I'm not sure if it is or not. So, but I haven't had a fever in a while, and usually that's a good indicator that everything's clearing up and getting better. You never know. Um, if it was just a cold or a flu or something, I'd know I'd be fine. But considering I have absolutely no symptoms, um, but I just want to make sure I'm checked out anyway because, <clears throat> again, I'm in my 40s and not so much like early 20s, yeah, I'm invincible. I get sick, I get sick for a week, then I'm good to go for the next year. Um, so, easily go to the, what, the CVS Minute Clinic or any med center, pay like 100, 150 bucks, whatever. Last time I did that, last time I went for strep throat, went to a med center, um, and this is what pisses me off. This is what pisses me off at these fucking places. Um, I had strep I knew I had strep throat. I knew the feeling. Everything. I, knew, I had the fever. Um, I knew what the symptoms were. Uh, I had nothing in the back of my throat at the time. Go to the doctor. Uh, they do the little the little swab, uh, and the doctor comes in. He goes, "Well, the swab came back negative. So what are you supposed to do? My symptoms? I explain everything in detail. Boom, 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 boom. And he goes, he goes, "Well, these these in-house tests don't usually always come back, you know, positive." Um, but, you know, based off your symptoms, you see me <laughs> talking about, um, and uh, based off, you know, what I can see, what you can see in the back, it looked like the start of strep throat. Um, so he goes, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put you on the antibiotics. No need to do the, um, literally said, no need to do the, to send out the sample for testing. Um, 
you got strep throat. You know, I know you do. I know that the test says negative, you got strep throat. So I say, so we're not, you're not going to send it out. He goes, no. Um, he goes, especially since you don't have insurance, you know, I don't want you to have to pay for that just to find out exactly what you already know. You and I both know. So I said, okay. And the paperwork literally said no, N A or something next to um, um, whatever the sent out test is called. Like, <laughs> uh, two, three weeks later, I get a phone call from that doctor's office, from the med center, the med center, not doctor's office, med center, saying, yeah, your lab results just came back in and you have strep throat. I said, we knew this. I'm like, these results were not supposed to be sent out. It's literally on the paperwork, so it's not supposed to be sent out. Oh, well, I'm like, am I getting charged for this shit? And he's like, well, no. And then two weeks later, I get a bill in the mail for the test being sent out while I was living. This is why I don't like these fucking places. I don't like the fucking health insurance thing. They do whatever the fuck they want because they can. They're allowed to do whatever the fuck they want because of the way the system is set up. All y'all people wanted to go on to fucking um, health care for all, whatever. You understand how fucking <laughs> how fucking fucked up it'll be. That system will be uh, once it goes to Medicaid for all, Medicare for all, or whatever the fuck you want to health care for all, universal health care. Be like, well, it'll, it'll, you know, if we go on the pay, it'll just come out of taxes. Well, everybody's taxes will go up. Everybody's taxes will go up. But, well, you go off to pay medical insurance. Well, what about the people who aren't, can't, aren't paying medical insurance right now? Their taxes are still going up, but they're not losing anything. They're not, like, there's no insurance premium coming out. So, here's what they're paying in taxes. Here's what you're paying in taxes plus the insurance. So let's say you're, you know, you got your whole family on insurance. Here's your taxes, plus your insurance. This is the shit that's coming out of your account. Universal health care comes, the taxes go up, but you have no more insurance. So now you're paying here. Well, the people who are just paying taxes and no insurance were here, and now they're here. So they are going to pay more um, automatically because of that. Uh, and while that's fine and dandy, the insurance company or the medical the, will be able to charge whatever the fuck they want once the government starts paying for it. Think how much shit, how much money the government pays for basic shit every day, all day. All these government contracts, they pay for shit. They don't get deals, which you think they would. They would go for deals. Um, I don't like AOC, period. I think she is the most overrated everything. But occasionally, occasionally she makes sense. Like there was, there was something I watched um, where she was calling out um, either a corporation that worked with the government or the government spending committee, whatever. They're like, what is this? You guys, you know, and pointed out the fact that they, whatever it was, it was some like O-ring or something. Um, you guys paid so and so amount of money, such and such amount of money, for such and such amount of these. So that equates to like three hundred dollars per part. Three hundred dollars per part. You know, I found this exact same part online. They are like thirty-three cents each. Something like that. I mean, I probably make it more extreme than it is. But that's that's how the government works. They are a non-profit organization, so they have to spend money. This is why your government is constantly fixing roads that just got fixed. They have to spend the money. So they will do something else to spend that money. But they're not going to invest in the, in the shitty-ass areas. The main roads. Let's do the main roads again. We could probably do another better job over here. But fuck this area over here. That's been fucked up for us. So they will spend money. They will spend 
they will pay $30 an hour to somebody who stands on the side of the road holding the stop sign like this while smoking a cigarette. And all, his whole fucking job all day long is to turn the, turn the stop and go sign around. That's his entire fucking job. He spends 30 bucks an hour to do that. I'm not saying people don't deserve to make money, obviously. But once you give the government, and then government has control over it in the first place. That's, that's the worst part. It may work in other places, but giving our government the control over our health, <laughs> that's, that's just dumb. That is just dumb. They have proven time and time again, especially more recently, they can't handle the jobs they're supposed to do and want to give them control over our bodies and our health. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough of that. So, yeah. I'd rather spend a hundred bucks every six months out of my pocket. Just that so happens I don't have it at this time when I need it, but I'd rather spend 100 bucks, 150 bucks out of my pocket than spending $150 every two weeks and then pay a $20 copay and then pay another $20 copay and then pay $2,000 deductible I have to reach before I can actually get any coverage anywhere for anything else. I need, I need, uh, I broke my wrist. I need to go get a cast. Well, you haven't reached your $5,000 uh, premium, so you have to pay $3,000. What the fuck was the point of the $6,000 I spent last year on insurance? Well, that's insurance. That's just in case something happens. Well, something fucking happened. Insurance company's a joke. Or spending an extra $150 a month on taxes to pay for universal health care so I can't go in and get an appointment because everybody and their mom is going, every hypochondriac who's going in every time they have a sniffle or a splinter. Or anything. Anyway, I'm hungry now. I wasted so much time. Anyway, it's about 45 minutes. It's louder than I thought it was going to be. I didn't turn it down.
place the weights back on the floor. Remember, keep one hand on your thigh. Anytime you're leaning forward, that's a good idea. And the last time, the weights stay down on the floor. Very good. Reach overhead. Reach and pull. Now, the further your legs are apart, the more intense the stretch is for your calf muscle, which is really nice to warm up the lower body and the upper body at the same time. Nice. Hold it here. Let's push the hips forward. And now sit down to that hamstring stretch. Oh my goodness, doesn't that feel good? Hip flexion. So you want to think of sinking straight up and down. And then sit back in your hamstring. Perfect. Come center. Let's stretch the back out. Round it up. Flatten it up. Good. Round your back up in the sky. Lift your chin. Lift your tailbone. Man, we're going to have a great time today. All the way up. I'm glad you're here with us. Ready, guys? Reach. Reach and pull. Other side. So, if you've got an area of the body you want to stretch out a little bit more because you're feeling tight, you can do that. Again, my favorite, hip flexor. So we drop two times and then sit back in the hamstring. Lift that toe up, lengthen the tailbone, press forward. Good. And hamstring stretch again. Hold it. Turn center and drop your right shoulder slow and hold it. Now switch, left shoulder comes down. That feels nice. Good, let's go singles. Right, left, right, left. All right, let's pick up the weight. Let's keep your knees bent. Ooh, tap it out. Well, hopefully you've gotten yourself nice and warm. We're going to start right away with lunges. So if you're at all worried about your knees, let me give you some tips that will really help to protect that joint. First of all, the further you step back, the easier it is on the knee joint. Keep the knee right over the ankle when we begin. Let's go arms up and bring the leg forward. Now, if you feel like you're losing your balance, you can take your foot out wider to the side. And remember that we're working to keep the ankle right underneath that knee joint. Elbows are in front of you, working the biceps. Good. Keep the elbows forward, coming down nice and slow in that bicep curl. Good control, building beautiful muscle. Again, down and up. Let's take it into a nice squat. And this time we're going to work your left leg. Lift it up. There you go. Outer thigh and shoulders at the same time. Two for the price of one today. We're going to sculpt that whole body, top to bottom. And you're doing awesome so far. Let's do it again. Now, when you're in this squat position, try to keep your weight on your heels. That will also protect that knee joint. Again, lift up. And you don't need to go show higher than shoulder height. Bring that left leg behind you. This is a curtsy lunge. And drop the arms. Nice and controlled. Still working the biceps. Again, outer thigh at the same time. And that does feel good. Come on, do it again for me. The more muscle you put in your body, the higher your metabolic rate. And I don't know about you, but I need to burn more calories while I'm resting. So I am happy you're here with me sculpting today. Let's take it to a nice wide plie. Toes are turned out. Lateral raise. Now the turnout, meaning the position of your feet, is really individual. It's up to you what feels good. But try to keep those knees as much over the ankle as possible. Again, now no higher than shoulder height. One more time. Excellent. Again, abs in tight, lift up. Again, one more time, and then we do a little bit of balance work. Up last time, I want you to curl up that right leg, bicep curls, and down. So we're bouncing on our left leg, curling the right leg, giving that right leg a little bit of a break, all the way up, all the way down. Now, not all the way up, and lift the leg in the back, lift, good. Rear extension, abs are in tight, you're standing up tall, the bicep curls right here in the center, nice. Curl up, oh man, I can feel that. Both feet down, rotation curl, halfway up, rotate open. Curl it up. Bring it down. I think we should shake it. Good. Bring it up. Rotate open. 
Shake it out. Shake it down. Shake it down, baby. Here, do it again. Up. Take a break and get water whenever you need to. If you need to take a rest, you can do that too. Or try to do every rep with us. That's your goal. Curl it up. Nice. Opposite leg. Now the left leg curls. Up nice and slow. And down. Good. Keep your knees soft. Balancing on that right leg. Good job. Do it again. Now halfway up, halfway down. Straight leg, straight leg. Point that toe. A little bit of a turn out. Good. So your toenails are facing the outside. Knee points to the outside. Halfway up, halfway down. This is perfect. Good. Rotation curls. Hands up. Rotate open. Curl up. Shake it down. Again. Hands up. Rotate. Enjoy the music. Take your mind off. But have a good time, guys. Again, up. Nice, strong, sexy arms. Curl up. Shake it down. Let's do it again. Bring it up. Rotate open. Curl. And down. One more time. One more time. It's up. We're going to work that other leg. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. Sketch now with your right leg back. Down. Two. Three. And curl. Good. Weights in the heel of your forward leg. Sometimes it takes a couple of reps to really figure out your balance on the other side of your body. Hang in there. It's all right because we've got another set. You have plenty of time to catch it. Elbows in front of your hips. Work those biceps. <sighs> nice. This is really a great way to burn calories because you're working upper body and lower body at the same time. Squat. Let's lift that right leg now. That'll raise beautiful shoulders. Tightening up those outer thighs. Good. We're going to do our part. You're doing great. Let's do that again. Nice wide squat. Oh, yeah. You're going to be able to wear whatever kind of bathing suit you want this summer. Do it again. One, two, three. And lift. Nice job, guys. Let's step back on that curtsy latch. Arms are up. And stay up tall. Check out the front knee. You don't have to go deep. Keep the ankle right underneath that knee joint. Good. Now, if you can, do another set with me. We want the right leg to match the left leg. That's always a good thing. You got it. Again. Down. Two. Three. Again. All right, guys. Let's go into that wide plie. It is three. One. Two. Lateral raise. Nice sculpted shoulders. Shoulders look good when you can see a little bit of definition. And don't worry about bulking up. It's not going to happen. You're just going to look lean and sculpted, turbo style. And you want to do this workout whenever you've got the time, whenever you can include it with your cardio workout. That's even better. We can do some cardio and some sculpting. Plus, we want you to help keep us company. Last time. You're ready, guys. Let's do a military press. Shoulders. Four counts up. Now balance. Lift up under those toes. Up. Nice. If you want to put your heels down, you can. I'm going to try to stay up here and balance the whole time. I think we can do it. Heels down. Now we go up quick and down three. Up and shake it down. Woo -wee. Up and shake it. Again, up. Shake it. Shake it. Now two up singles. Go up, down, up, and down. Make your abs strong. Draw them in. Support your spine. Push overhead in front of your forehead just slightly. Now we're going to alternate lifting the heels. First the right leg, then the left leg. Push all the way up. How are your shoulders doing? Okay. Hang in there. I know you can feel this. You want to just work to the point of fatigue. That's your goal. Right arm only. And if you're already there, if your arms are already shaking, you can't do another rep, then take a break. Come back as soon as you can. Other side. Come on. Now push yourself. This is your workout. What you put into it is exactly what you're going to get out of it. Both arms. Now push. Come on. You're at the end. You can do it. Come on, shoulders. Don't let me down. Oh, yeah. Tap it out. Woo! 
same thing, but with a row. So we go down, and as you pull up, bring the elbows tight to your body. Good. Mindy and Honorita are both doing this workout without the weights. And as you can see, if you're very good with your technique, you're getting a great workout, plie, even without using the weights, because you're lifting your own body weight up and down. So the legs are still going to start to shake. And eventually, I want you to add light weights. And when this isn't a good workout for you anymore, then you add even heavier weights. Here we go. Down and up. Good. Lift the arms up. Beautiful job, guys. Lateral raise. Lift the arms up. Woo! That's nice. Do it again. Up. Now stay low and give me four counts up, four counts down. Good. Stay low in that plie. Stay low in that plie. You can come out of it and take a break if you need to, but if you can stay low, stay down here with us. Awesome. Come on, come on, come on. We're going to balance. Are you guys ready? Lift that right leg up. Up. Woo. Push down like you're pushing out a brake pedal. <laughs> Lift. Nice. How'd you do? You all right? Still feeling strong? Good. Good. Yeah. Lift up. Switch legs. Over the go. Okay. Push down strong.
toward me. Awesome. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Down and up. Good. You feel pretty deep if you feel like it. Do the same thing. Stay those. We're going to lift the right heel. That will left heel contract your calf muscles. Good. Keep your weight centered. Lift up on the toe. You feel those muscles get tight. Oh, you're going to have some nice legs. Nice legs, guys. Military press. Take it overhead. Four. And down. Now, I'm still in my squatting position. You can, too. If you need a break, just straighten out your legs. Or keep the whole thing down. Oh, yeah. That'll burn a little bit. Now, singles. Go. Up. And down. Up. And down. You're doing great. Come on. Stay low. It's going to be worth it. If your legs are shaking, you are normal. That's the whole goal, to reach muscular fatigue. Keep pushing now and lift out to the side. The palms are facing each other. Good. Out at about a 45-degree angle. Lift. Come on, like you're lifting the world up. You're strong. Come on. Push. You're doing awesome. Keep it up. Keep it up. Here we go, guys. See that thought. Elbows slightly bent and palms coming toward each other. Good, do that again. 
and four and four. Out nice and slow control. Elbows go almost to the floor, not all the way down. Nice job. Do it again. Good control. You're going to maintain that constant bend at your elbow. Out and together. Now we go quick, quick, slow. Out, together, and out slow. Up, out, together, slow. Good job, guys. Out, together, and lower slow. Again. Quick, quick. Now slow the whole thing down. Eight counts out. Eight counts up. Man, you can feel that work in the chest muscles. Going super slow is very effective way to train because then it's just you and your muscles. All right, guys. Quick, quick, slow. Here it is. Quick, quick, up, slow. Do it again. Quick, quick, and slow. If you need to take a break, as always, take a break. But come back to it as soon as you can. The goal is to try to finish these exercises together. Now, just partial range of motion. Out, together. Out, together. Relax your neck. Focus on using your muscles in your chest. Out, and together. You're almost home. You're almost there. Chest almost done. Get it right away together. Slide it into your chest. Both knees into the chest. All the way up. Put the weights down. Good job, guys. Then turn into plank, which is like a push-up position. Make sure you get your hips down, abs nice and tight, when you knee pulls. Here we go. Draw in and back. Now, of course, you can do this on your knees, but I want you to promise me that eventually you're going to try to pull one knee at a time, and ultimately you'll do the whole set. Open up the side plank. Hello. Put one knee down. There's half moon. Lower all the way down to the floor, guys. Good job. We're going to contract the abs and really work those obliques. So bend both knees. Here we go. Side. Side. You feel it? Right here, baby. Squeeze. Of course, you're also feeling that in the gluteus medius muscles. Right here. Back of the hips. Look at those pulse rate. One. One. Two. Three. And reach. Now, to make this a little easier, you can stay down the whole time. You can rest your upper body on your forearm. Or you can work that tricep at the same time. Can you do some singles? Come on, baby. Work. Just work that body. Come on. Crunch. And reach. Crunch. And reach. You're almost home. Can you hang in there? Come on. We can do it together. Nice. Oh, three. Come on. One. Two. This is going to give you those nice toned abs that you've been looking for. Come on, lift. Two, three. You are so close to being done. You're almost there. Good job, guys. Now turn over the plank again. Remember, this is like a push up position. Draw the abs in. Make sure your hips are up in the air. Bring it down. Draw the knee in. In. And back. In. And back. And back. Side plank. Open it up. Have one knee down if you want. Lower that knee. There you go. We're going to work the other side, so bring it down, baby. Remember, on the elbow or resting. Up to you. Here we go. Muscles are going to start to change. Spinning all the way down to my favorite yoga pose, 
called child's pose. Warm up thumbs down, hands back behind you, and take a deep breath in. All right, let's go ahead and sit all the way up in the hero's pose. That was a great job. I hope you feel good. You know that feeling of euphoria when you finished a really great workout? Swing your legs all the way around. Let's take these last couple of seconds together to make sure we improve our flexibility while the muscles are nice and warm. Fan the arms up. And go ahead and fold forward. Reach as far forward as... I don't like her pull down the switch. I love the video. Not the... Not her stretch. It's good in coffee. It's, it's good coffee. Is that what is that what you're saying? It's good coffee. Something like that. It's good to have coffee. Anyway, I'm gonna do. I, I don't like that seated hamstring stretch. I never liked it. I don't mind the single leg one, but this is so much more effective. Lots of stretch at your spine out. The inner thigh here, without having to go into a full split, slide over as deep as you can go. And you just lean into it a little bit, gives you a little better stretch. Easy quad stretch and hip flexor stretch. Here, keep your hip pushed forward, gives you a nice quad stretch, pull it back a little bit, lean back, gives you a hip flexor stretch. So, quad stretch, and hip flexor stretch. That little bit I did was a better stretch than she does in that video. Again, I love that. I love that video. Because I wouldn't be doing it, you know, repeatedly. It's a great, it's a great exercise video. The cool down, the stretches are lacking. Cool downs. Cool downs in the cardio videos are great, but then again, the stretching afterwards is not so great. So, I have to know exactly what that says. <laughs> it's kind of bug me if it does, but I don't. something good coffee. I know that. <laughs> I should know Spanish. should know it much better. Okay. Wait up. That's done. How good is this coffee? Not as close.
Anyway, okay. So, um, All right, so tomorrow's the last workout day for the week. Um, for the segment, for the first three months of the quarter. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a combination of hip hop abs, fat burning cardio, and ab sculpt, which I did on Wednesday. See, doing those individually is like, wasn't such a big deal, but putting them together um, actually get really good, really good cardio work. So, uh, we're doing that again, uh, which would be the last of the hip hop abs uh, for another six weeks. Um, Sunday we do a stretch day, then we go into our 3 of 10 series, which will last a total of six weeks, five weeks plus another recovery week. Uh, and for the five weeks, the warm up plus the recovery will be all uh, turbo jam. That would just be part of the recovery. So it'll be uh, warm up wise, it'll be um, the 20 minute workout on Monday, the ab jam. Yes, the ab jam on Tuesday. Uh, and then the, as of right now, I'm going to do the learn and burn again, the learn and burn burn section, which is only like 15 minutes on leg day. Um, even though it's not a lot that hit on some thighs that I did on Wednesdays with the hip hop abs. I think it was a lot more than I wanted to do on leg day before warm up wise for my legs beforehand because it's a lot of leg stuff, which is what it was supposed to be. Um, but I don't think my Turbo Jam series um, has a cardio that is just geared towards legs, that's rough, that's less than a half an hour. So, we have what's in there is, it's, what is it now? The Learn and Burn, the Cardio Party Mix 1, and the Turbo Sculptor on that disc. This disc is, okay, so a 20 minute workout, the Ab Jam, Punch, kick, and jam, that's a 45 minute workout, which is pretty good. It's a pretty good um, cardio workout. Plus, at the end, they do about 10 minutes or so of um, uh, resistance band, which I think is it's kind of awkward what they do with it. Um, I guess they, they probably choreographed and practiced that quite a bit because I tried it once. And I, think, I think the reason I stopped doing using it because. Then they have kick and core, which is and total body blast, which is on the uh, weight ball or the exercise ball, the, the, the aerobic ball, the yoga ball, whatever the fuck that thing is. Uh, and cardio party mix two, cardio party mix three. Those are all 45 minutes. Uh, and totally tubular turbo. They do have a lower body jam, but I think that includes weights. But I think I'm going to check that one out just to make sure when I get upstairs. The fat blast was about 30 minutes, um, which is fine. Um, I was thinking about switching to that one as opposed to the learn and burn, uh, just because it's a little more intense, a little more cardio based, and I think I'm kind of falling behind on my fat loss. So I think I kind of up the cardio a little bit. But then again. The Turbo Jam videos are better cardio, in my opinion, than the hip hop apps were. So, plus we're adding interval training um, during the uh, in between sets for the next for the next uh, two two segments. So, between set one and set two, and between set two and set three, we'll be doing like just minor stuff, running in place, jumping jacks, things like high knees, things like that. 
And then obviously between set three and the next set one, we'll be getting things set up for the next exercise because most of those will require um, some setup. Some are, some are just going to be grabbing different dumbbells or something. But um, at least in between the sets for each exercise, we'll be doing that. Then when we do the five, six, we'll do the same thing. We'll do it between set one, set two, set two, set three, set three, set four, set four, set five. Um, and be a little bit longer. So, which, again, should be a kick in my ass to get my ass down here at a decent time so I can make sure that I can get to get out and work at a decent time and not miss the lunch rush, even though I think the lunch rush has kind of fallen off. But uh, going out for the lunch rush and making some money and sitting around is better than just sitting around and not making any money. So if I'm going to make 10, 15 bucks an hour, I'd rather have the option of doing it and sitting in my car than sitting here and not making it. I was like, it's not enough to go out. Like, it's not enough for me to go out, but at this point, it's, it's enough to go out. So, because there's, I'm falling, falling too far behind. So, and I can't, I can't do that. It's not okay. All right, anyway, uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch, all the same usernames. So, whatever you're watching me on, if you want to check out the other one, same username. Uh, along with my Facebook and my Twitter, uh, which I'm not on those for, for this. Uh, I was thinking about adding Facebook live stream. I might still do that uh, when we start the next set Monday. So I can use my phone for that as well. Um, I was kind of hoping to get one of, the, one of those tablets to work. But they don't seem to want to. I can use my phone. It's not a big deal. Nothing happens while I'm down here. I may want to look something up, like make sure I translate it that way. But whatever. Um, anyway, Twitch, I just live stream on. I don't know if there's anything else to do with that. Um, I mentioned my Facebook and Twitter. Twitter, I do uh, post the links and the weekly updates and highlight reels uh, there, links to the workouts them. And then for the most part, I just randomly jump on there and argue with what goes in the show. So, uh, that's about pretty much my Twitter. Facebook, pretty much I, I've decided to leave, leave everything public that I've been posting lately. I might post things privately. It doesn't mean I'm going to add you just because I post everything public. Um, Facebook, as far as adding people, is still still consider, I can still consider that a private page. So uh, that way, if I want to post things privately, it only goes to people that I know, or that at least I've had on there for a long time. So, but then again, the public stuff, I, I say on Twitter, and I say on TikTok, and I say, so it doesn't fucking matter. So, but anyway, I, I still probably won't add you on, on Facebook, no, no offense, that's just, Instagram has my uh, weekly updates, and the, I'm just going completely out of where I hate when I do this. I hate it. I hate it. Twitch is just Twitch. Um, Facebook and Twitter, I'm not, I'm not using for this right now, but I do update them with this stuff. So if you happen to see it on there, cool. Um, Instagram has all the weekly updates. Weekly update, the highlight reels, and also the progress pictures. So the weekly progress progress pictures are posted on there for your viewing pleasure. It also has some of my artwork on there. It has all my art, artwork on there. Pictures of my artwork. Pictures of my pictures of my artwork. Uh, some good, some bad, some horrible. Uh, some are pretty decent, I think. Uh, but whatever, and other stuff. And then YouTube gets all the workout videos and recording over there in the camcorder. Uh, I edit those with some text overlays and things like that. And I post those to YouTube in the workout form. 
the fitness journey playlist on YouTube contains everything that I have posted on my TikTok. Anyway, other than the workouts, all the updates that I do, anything about the workout goes to TikTok first, and they are posted in the Fitness Journey playlist. Um, and then the Highlight Reel playlist contains just highlights of the week of the workout. It's really it. I enjoy them. I'm pretty much the only one who does enjoy them. I just like watching them. I love watching my stomach go down. So I make those four once a week. Um, all of those videos are contained in the fitness journey playlist on YouTube. All of those videos on TikTok are shared to Instagram and Facebook and Twitter afterwards. But they all go to TikTok first. Because TikTok is my main account. And that's where I post everything. Uh, I try to I try to do everything there. Uh, I've been scrolling a lot more through Facebook, but that's mainly just because I see a lot of DoorDash shit. And I'm uh, constantly trying to see what's going on, making sure the app's working properly, uh, trying to get other drivers to actually be more professional, be more customer service oriented, uh, so that you get better service and that we. Tips by these assholes going there. You need to tip me better, you're not getting me fucking food. You know, fucking shitheads like that. So, um, other than that, I, I'm mainly scrolling through TikTok. So, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, by all means, leave a comment on whatever video or picture you're looking at or whatever platform you're viewing me on right now. Live streams, perfectly fine. Uh, I would prefer, however, if it's not during the live stream. TikTok and utilize the Q&A feature and, or comment on one of the videos in the Highlight Reel playlist or the Fitness Journey playlist. Uh, and then I can make a video response to you and I can share those as needed, if needed, uh, to the other platforms. Because most likely the other question or comment that's That would justify more than a couple, um, you know, a couple word answer. Um, I think other people would probably benefit from hearing the answer to your question. So, yeah, I stumbled the fuck through that, but whatever. That's what I did. I'm just. I talk so much. You would think that I would have this shit down. Not be a, not be such a fucking. You know, stumble over all my fucking words on that. But then again, I don't have it written down in front of me. Where I can just read it off and get into a habit of reading shit. From a teleprompter. Pretty cool. Pretty cool a teleprompter right there. I could put a teleprompter. I could. I could very easily take one of those tablets because at least that I know I could probably put on there put some sort of teleprompter on there, put it right behind there, and it looks like I'm looking at the cameras and be like, yeah, and then, you know. I could do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Um, anyway. Listen, I'm not going to ignore you if you want to communicate with me on whatever platform you're seeing this on. I'm not going to do it. Um, Again, I would prefer if you went through TikTok. That's, that's all I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. I'm just basically repeat myself. Um, so, I'm done.